Hi everyone, this is Will with KL Aviation, and in this lesson we're going to look at the differences between Jeppesen and FAA or NACO approach charts published by the U.S. government. Here we have two charts for the same approach. On the left we have the Jeppesen ILS or localizer DME 1 left to Las Vegas, Nevada, and on the right we have the FAA published chart for the ILS or localizer DME runway 1 left to Las Vegas McCarran. Now the first thing that we're going to look at is at the very top. If you look at the approach name on the Jeppesen chart, it very clearly states what approach it is. Here it says it is the ILS or localizer DME runway 1 left. On the FAA chart, it's the ILS or localizer slash DME one left, which is still fairly easy to understand, but creates a little bit of confusion with the slash in there with the localizer slash DME one left. Also, on the Jeppesen chart, Las Vegas is at the very top of the chart, so if you're flipping through, it's easier to see Las Vegas, whereas on the FAA chart, it's in a little bit smaller text at the bottom. Now, the second item at the top on the Jeppesen chart is the date that the approach chart was revised along with the number of the approach chart. Now you can easily tell that this approach chart was modified the 2nd of March 2012. Therefore it's easy to tell if you have a current version of a chart or not. And also if two people have the same chart, you could tell if they have the same date on their chart if it's a proper chart. Also, the 11-1 at the top is standard numbering for all Jeppesen charts. Jeppesen approaches always start with an 11 for a precision approach, or in this case actually an ILS approach, and they're numbered sequentially 11-1 might be one left, 11-2 would be one right, and so on and so forth. So you know that if you're looking at an 11 chart, you're going to be flying an ILS. Also, charts such as an airport diagram under Jeppesen are always labeled 10-9. So if you look for the 10-9 chart for Jeppesen, you will always have an airport diagram. This system makes it much easier to keep track of which Jeppesen chart you're on and exactly what kind of approach or chart that you happen to be looking at. Conversely, with the FAA, there's very little data at the top of the chart except for the name of the approach. You don't know if the date is correct. You can look down here along the side, but it's much harder to discern. Also, you have to actually flip through the charts in whatever order the FAA has them organized in to find the appropriate chart. There's no set ordering of charts. Now, when we move down, you can see on the Jeppesen chart, they have what's called a briefing strip. The briefing strip is designed to give you the information that's best briefed during an instrument approach briefing. You can see it has a localizer, final approach course, glide slope intercept altitude, ILS and DA or DH, airport elevation, touchdown elevation, the missed approach, and finally any notes related to the approach. Therefore, if you simply read the briefing strip items, then you'll hit every item that is required to fly the approach and every item that needs to be set when you do fly the approach. On the FAA chart, at the top we have symbols for whether we need alternates or uh, if the airport has any special takeoff minimums. A uh, couple notes on inoperative table does not apply to the straight in localizer here. Uh, type of approach lighting, missed approach is textually described, and a bunch of radio frequencies. It's really not easy to tell from the top of the chart exactly what needs to be briefed. If we look up here at the very top, they do have the uh, frequencies and the course along with some uh, altitudes there, the touchdown zone elevation and airport elevation. But really everything isn't really clustered together, it's all in different locations. Also, when you look at the Jeppesen chart, the notes for the approach are all in one small box. You can get everything that you need in that one box. If you look at the FAA chart, they're sc scattered around a little bit. You have DME required here on the map, you have this inoperative table does not apply up here. And uh, you have the takeoff minimums and alternate minimums also listed there. 
Now on the note about takeoff minimums and alternate requirements on the FAA chart. On Jeppesen you'll notice that they aren't there. And that's because with Jeppesen, if you have a larger airport such as Las Vegas, you'll have a separate 10-9 or airport diagram, which has both the airport diagram and the lists all of the takeoff alternate uh, or excuse me, takeoff minimums, alternate requirements every little piece of information that you need to know about the airport. You don't have to go flipping, flipping through uh, to find that like you do in an FAA chart up to the front and look through a list of airports and find kind of bad textual descriptions about what you need to do. On the Jeppesen chart, they're all right there on the airport diagram. If you're flying out of a smaller airport, the airport diagram is actually going to be on the back of an approach plate such as this 11-1 ILS. You would flip it over and on the back side would be the airport diagram along with all that other information about uh, takeoff minimums, alternate requirements, runway remaining, and all those kinds of items. So it's really much more user friendly in that aspect. Now let's take a look at the uh, plan view here. On the uh, Jeppesen plan view you'll notice it's pretty decluttered. They have exactly the fixes that you need and their associated DMEs. They list the uh, ILS information here, and they have their missed approach diagram. On the NACO chart, or FAA chart, it gets really cluttered with all of these high terrain markings, or antenna markings in this case. The uh, DMEs and the fixes aren't quite as clear here. The VOR information gets kind of mixed in with the ILS information. Uh, you lose Boulder City down here. It's all kind of cluttered together. It makes it much more difficult to read. And the lines are and numbers are actually quite a bit smaller. If you look at the 6800 uh, Las Vegas DME arc versus this one, this one's in bold here on the Jeppesen chart, which makes it just that much easier to read when you're actually trying to fly the approach. You can glance down and see it much easier. Also, if you'll notice, the uh, plan view takes up the entire width of the chart on Jeppesen. On the FAA chart, it's kind of intruded on by the MSA and by the uh, airport diagram. And really on the Jeppesen chart, the only thing that intrudes upon it is the depiction of Boulder City there for the missed approach. Next, when we come down to the profile view, again you'll notice it's much less cluttered on the Jeppesen chart. You have a simple listing of fixes, their associated altitudes, and distances. You also have the VDP published for your visual descent point and the missed approach point labeled. In the FAA chart, you have, again, many more lines and uh, smaller text and everything kind of cluttering up this display here. Again, it makes it much harder to read if you're just trying to glance down and see what you need to do. Now one thing that the FAA does have over Jeppesen here on this chart is a small missed approach icon section. You know, it's Jeppesen does have it down here near the minimums, but on the FAA chart it's just a little bit easier to read with its location right below the plan view. You don't have to really go hunting and a bunch of other stuff. It kind of jumps out at you. It makes it a, a little bit easier to uh, read. Now when we move on to uh, the uh, ground speed here on the Jeppesen chart, you get the glide slope here of 3.4 degrees and the varying ground speeds and exactly what uh, rate you need to descend at to uh, stay on glide slope. That's really useful information, especially when you're flying the localizer approach here because it gives you a good place to shoot for. So when you're, when you're descending here, let's say out of 5,100 feet at uh, node I down to the uh, MDA, you know that you know, if you're going 90 knots, you're going to need somewhere around 600 feet per minute to stay on that glide path. That'll probably get you uh, down right there on time at your visual descent point. Uh, if you go at 500 feet a minute, you'll probably get right around there as well. And it's good situational awareness information. Get on the Jeppesen side, you do have these missed approach icons now uh, above the minimum section. And you also have the approach lighting system down here. Now it's a much more, uh, much better place to have it, really, because 
It's not something you're going to be glancing at all the time, and it's really associated with this final kind of segment here with the minimums and the, and the landing. Uh, it's also pretty clear, and it gives you a picture of what you're looking for, where the pappy is. It's labeled pappy or it's labeled vassy. It's not like here on the FAA chart where it's got the, uh, the MALSIF designation with uh, the A4 indicating, you know, pilot controlled lighting. Uh, it's it's much easier to understand here on the uh, on the Jefferson chart. Finally, when you get down to minimums, Jefferson takes the entire width of the chart for their minimums. So here you can see that the ILS is this box. Your categories are over here on the left, and your minimums are right here in the middle. Your next, your localizer, right here on the next block. Categories A and B are a mile. Category C, a mile and a half. And finally, circle to land is always on the right. So whenever you're looking for circling minimums, they're always over here on the right. They give you the ground speed that you need to fly, and exactly what, uh, I'm correct, it gives you the, the knots that you're flying, so here we have 90 knots. And, uh, the MDA for that, which is part of your category, and uh, your visibility, and it makes it quite a bit easier to read. Whereas on the FAA side here, your minimums are listed sequentially, so your ILS is on top and your categories are across. Finally, your localizer here, categories across. It creates a lot more uh, boxes, and uh, the grid view is just a little bit more difficult to uh, to read, really, when you're trying to glance down and figure out a minimum quick. On the ILS I know that I can always look to the far left and see one mile. Whereas on the uh, FAA chart I gotta come down and differentiate between the uh, 2460 for the uh, DA and the one mile for the actual uh, visibility requirement. Also circling minimums are also a little bit uh, harder to understand here for the FAA chart. You have 3081 and a quarter you get into a lot of the uh, AGL values and, and other issues to round up, which are partly due to uh, military requirements, but just kind of clutters up the display a little bit more. Also, you eat up a lot of space on an FAA chart with this airport diagram. While it's kind of handy to have an airport diagram on the approach chart, it's certainly not necessary, especially when, as in Jefferson's case, you have an entire page devoted to the airport. You can look at it, you can brief it, you can get yourself really familiar with the airport before you land. Uh, this airport diagram is not really useful for much except if you happen to break out, I guess, in an odd angle, you could kind of determine where you were. But uh, otherwise, without any taxiway information or anything, it's it's not very helpful. And really using the, uh, having the lighting systems listed for the entire airport is uh, really unnecessary. And you also have if you look at this here, you have touchdowns on elevation listed here and here. It's kind of redundant. Airport elevation listed twice. And these are just things that you don't need all over the place. So there's my basic overview of some of the differences between the Jeppesen and FAA charts. There's certainly many, many, many others. There's actually over a thousand page manual that uh, Jeppesen publishes regarding its charts and different things that are helpful while you go fly, uh, different IFR rules and such. And uh, there's certainly many more charts that Jefferson offers than the FAA does just in their, uh, their schemes of providing uh, their numbering system for approach charts and their different uh, airport, approach, airport diagrams and uh, whatnot. And also one of the other benefits that you'll get from Jefferson charts is if you have something big, if you have a uh, departure procedure, an arrival procedure, an airport that's large, the charts are going to fold out. So they're going to be uh, two or three times the width of a normal page. That's really helpful when you're when you're trying to taxi around a kind of a big airport. You don't have to stare at really small letters. Everything's a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to read, which is sort of the the overall Jefferson uh, advantage. Everything's just a little bit easier to read. A lot less clutter. A lot better lettering. Bolder lettering. Overall, much better experience. As you can tell, I'm pretty biased towards Jeppesen. I use Jeppesen a lot at work, and uh, that's where I've really learned to uh, love it. 
As far as in my military flying, I use a lot of FAA charts. I've become very familiar with them, but uh, every time I have a choice, I'll go back to Jefferson every day. Thanks for watching. I hope this lesson was informative, and I look forward to seeing you again on another KL Aviation lesson.